Hi folks, I've been studying uh, intercalation and exfoliation of graphite lately and I found this uh, video that's uh, really interesting uh, by uh, Thomas E. Malik from Penn State University who's a, and he's a bioengineer. This uh, information here is uh, like directly uh, applicable to uh, the biocell as I'm going as I'm going to show you here. All right, I'll put the link to this video down in the description box. But uh, this guy's work is is uh, is really perfect uh, because uh, look at the three uh, types of uh, structures he can build. Uh, in the first one, he's using graphite to create uh, single layer graphene, and uh, in the in the second example, he's making a semi metal from a semiconductor. And then in the third example, he's uh, growing semiconductors inside of a uh, planar structure. So you can use these. Uh, you the first one, we can make a cathode out of it. The second one, we can make a uh, separator uh, with it. The third one, we we might be able to make a uh, anode with it and intercalate it in uh, graphite and make an all carbon uh, biocell. Notice that he's using titanium dioxide in his examples. Okay, in this slide here, Thomas is making the point that uh, intercalation has a long history of using uh, uh, strong acids in, uh, in redox reactions. The point is that the strong acids damage the uh, graphene in the process of uh, splitting uh, the graphite apart. Now in this slide, he's talking about a uh, non-redox uh, method of intercalating uh, boron nitride into graphite. And notice that boron nitride has boron in it, just like borax does. And that one of the acids uh, that he uses to uh, intercalate uh, the boron is uh, phosphoric acid. Okay, now in this video, or in this slide, Thomas gets down to the meat of the exfoliation method, uh, which is based on phosphoric acid. And anhydrous phosphoric acid is a solid. That's why you can't buy phosphoric acid any stronger than 85% uh, because it has to have some water in it to uh, keep it from becoming a solid. So uh, what the method is in a nutshell, if you're intercalating or uh, exfoliating uh, things with phosphoric acid, uh, you basically just have to mix your acid in with your graphite uh, put it on your magnetic stir with some heat on it, evaporate all the water out of it, and then, uh, and then rehydrate it, and uh, you'll exfoliate your, uh, your graphite. Okay, now in this slide, he's showing that once you have your graphite intercalated, uh, that you can simply stir in a polar solvent to uh, exfoliate the graphite and including just water as he has highlighted there in the third example and the cool part is that uh, you get mostly single sheet uh, exfoliation uh, out of it so which means you're basically forming graphene okay now on this slide he's showing that it's possible to uh, create layers of phosphates and oxides like titanium dioxide so uh, that means you can make uh, layers of uh, graphite with titanium dioxide in between them. And that might be real interesting to uh, try right there to see what that does to the, to the power of the cell. Okay, now on this slide, he's talking about the alkali transition metal oxide intergrowths. And the one I'm interested in is the very first example there of the sodium titanium oxide. And... Uh, because uh, that one we're using borax which is uh, sodium borate dodecahydrate and so there's there's sodium in that and then the other uh, phosphate I'm interested in is trisodium phosphate the, the sodium titanium dioxide uh, will work perfect for that in this slide Thomas is talking about uh, polyelectrolyte layer by layer assembly and he makes the point that it's a uh, self-limiting uh, assembly system and it's very user-friendly. And what he means by self-limiting 
assembly is that uh, this method works by uh, charge inversion, uh, which means that the the double uh, the double charge on the surface of the uh, of your electrolyte uh, limits the deposition of the new layer to one molecule thick and then the charge uh, switches to from positive to negative or negative to positive and then that uh, will limit the next layer that's deposited to a single molecular layer too. Right, this is Dr. Uh, Malik's uh, conclusion slide for his presentation and in number two here he lists uh, quantitative exfoliation as uh, one of the uh, uh, benefits of it which means that if you start with a pound of graphite you're going to get a pound of graphene out of it and uh, the number three there is that you can use uh, sonification which I didn't talk about uh, with this method too to make it easier and faster yeah number four uh, their anions are, uh, are like uh, oxides uh, are perfect for uh, the layer by layer assembly um, and the, the last point that he makes is you get uh, anomalously strong um, hydrogen bonding and stabilization with this uh, with this process so those are all really good uh, characteristics to, to have for an intercalation and exfoliation process all right I'll all right I'm back and I want to show you a little experiment here <coughs> with uh, the electrolytes that I'm going to use in the in the cell and uh, this is trisodium phosphate here in this little box and I have a little bit of that in some distilled water here in this little cup and in this one here is uh, phosphoric acid and the trisodium phosphate is a salt of phosphoric acid so they both have this PO4 uh, negative uh, ion in there uh, the only difference really between them is the salt has sodium in there in place of the hydrogen uh, here in the phosphoric acid so I'm going to uh, take a drop of this phosphoric acid and and uh, drip it in the uh, trisodium phosphate so you can see the chemical reaction that takes place all right right here we go you see that I don't know if you can see that on camera or not let me get it up here a little closer now watch see all the see all the bubbles that formed on that now what I believe is happening in there is uh, when we add the acid to the to the salt um, remember it has the same the, the PO4 ion uh, is is uh, pH dependent and so as the pH and this is an alkaline uh, solution here and as we add the acid to it the pH drops the PO4 switches to PO3 and if we drop it farther it goes down to 3O2 and then and then the PO1 and then right down to just uh, 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 PO so uh, you're we're losing oxygen and that's what you're seeing there uh, coming out uh, in in the uh, solution there is oxygen and of course the, this is what the cell wants is oxygen to oxidize the the uh, zinc so that it produces power I'm going to show you something else interesting with this trisodium phosphate here when I first started playing around with it I uh, I took a little bit of uh, white glue and put in it but you see there's our there's our PVA gel right there and that was made with trisodium phosphate instead of borax so what I did was after I learned that I combined a little trisodium phosphate with borax and I'll show you what I did with that in just a second as soon as I set up for it I'll be back alright I'm back 
and what I've got here in this tub is a mixture of uh, a borax and trisodium phosphate solution about 50-50 and what I've got here is my new uh, mix of titanium dioxide and this uh, clear PVA glue and alcohol and I'll have to show you how I, I make this because there is a little trick to it because of the denatured uh, material that they put in the alcohol that you buy but I'll do that in another, in another time uh, so uh, anyway I'm going to take, uh, take our titanium and PVA mix and alcohol here and just take a drop on my finger and coat this zinc electrode with it. Alright, now we're going to uh, make a cell with this uh, new uh, electrode there and see how it does. So I just got graphite in the water here. I'm going to paint that on there. This one coat. And we're going to take a piece of paper towel as a separator for this. And you can see it's bleeding through there. But the paper towel is really to hold the graphite and water and because our membrane is on this okay so now I'm going to take and slip that right on top of it there like that and let's see what kind of volts and amps we got I hope I started this recording alrighty here we go and our volts are 97, 98 and climbing. Alright, we're at 106 and it's still climbing, but let's check and see what our, what our amps are on that now. Ready? Here we go. 3, 2, 1. There we go. Look at that. Climbing. 40. And that's on the dead short. That's some pretty good power, and that's just one coat of uh, graphite on there. And we'll we'll take it apart now and add some more to it. All right, now we are. Whoops! Let's go to volts first. that 120.5 I'm slowly dropping on that because it needs a discharge boy that extra coat made a huge difference in our volts didn't it alright let's see what our amps do that should be better too ready 3 2 1 154 how about that and that's our that's our starting thing and we know that that's going to improve alright there you have it. I think I'm about out of time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.